everybody, I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you a beautiful traditional Ukrainian recipe for how to bake a poppy seed roll called makivnik. Now it is Ukrainian Christmas Eve and uh, we are. this is one of the um, dishes that is typically served during uh, Chris, the Christmas Eve for Ukrainians. So I'm going to start with four cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to combine my dry ingredients first. I have just over a quarter cup of sugar. I have a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt and I have two teaspoons of instant dry yeast. Now I'm just going to stir that through so these things are evenly combined. The dry ingredients, mix them through. Now I have just over one cup of milk that I need to scald. You can either do it in the microwave or you can do it on your stovetop. Now scalding the milk is bringing it up to, you know, a simmer, a bubble, but not necessarily boiling it through, okay? So this will probably take about a minute in my microwave. I also have one egg that I have at room temperature and I'm just going to mix that through in its own little bowl first, whisk that with a fork. Now this is a traditional sweet dough for Ukrainians. It's used for a lot of different recipes, in fact, not just Makivnik, but um, it can be used in, in a number of different ways. Okay, my, my milk is nice and warm. That's gonna go in, stir that through while I'm adding it, in fact. In goes three and a half tablespoons of melted butter, as well as that one egg that I whisked up. Now do your best to stir this through right now. You could use a mix master for this if you wanted to, uh, but I'm going to do this by hand because it won't take long to knead. It's an easy dough. That sugar helps the yeast grow. So you can just do this on your countertop or on a, a pastry sheet, uh, but I'm going to just put some bench flour down so the things don't stick and turn this dough out. You can see the consistency of the dough. That's what it looks like right now. And I'm just going to start kneading this. This is going to go for about 8 to 10 minutes by hand. And I'm just going to pull this all together as best I can. Don't use too much bent flour. You don't want to introduce too much dry flour. Keep it that same kind of consistency, hydration. Mmm, smells good. So when you're kneading dough, you're going to pull it towards you over top of itself and push down away from you. Do a quarter turn and repeat. And just keep doing that. That's what kneading is. So you have to work that dough. It's nice and warm actually. Um, so that you can develop that gluten. That way you get those nice bubbles in your dough. And things rise and they're nice and light. Gorgeous. Now if it starts sticking, just add a little bit of bench flour. Try and get everything in there. It's like my mama and my grandma did it. <laughs> All right, so I've been kneading this dough for 10 minutes. You're gonna feel that it's much more smooth and it's much more together. And I'll show you what it looks like. You're gonna form it into a nice ball, the best you can. Okay, beautiful ball. It smells delicious and yeasty in here. I love baking bread. There you go, so that's what it looks like, okay? I have a large bowl. You need a bowl that it's at least three times larger than it because it's going to really inflate, okay, with, with air from the yeast. So I'm just going to grease this bowl quickly, lightly, with oil or with butter. And in goes my dough. Now you can cover this with plastic wrap if you like, but that's not how my mommy and my grandmother did it. I'm going to cover it with a linen ta tea towel. And you're going to put it somewhere where it's nice and in a warm location or a sunny location or somewhere where there's not going to be any cold or draft. Like, don't put it by a door, for instance, especially since it's winter here. All right, so it's nice and warm. This is going to rise uh, for about an hour and a half or two hours, as long as you have. So if I have two hours, I'm going to do it for that long. And I guess you'll see me then. All right, my dough is almost just totally risen. It looks beautiful for the McKibnick. And I'm going to get the ingredients ready for the filling. Now it's a poppy seed and hazelnut filling that I'm doing today. And we're gonna start by putting our poppy seeds. I have just over maybe a cup and maybe a tablespoon of poppy seeds. And I'm going to grind that in my coffee grinder. Now these are dry poppy seeds as opposed to the wet ones that I used in my kutia recipe for the uh, winter wheat berry pudding, a sweet wheat berry pudding. 
So we're gonna make a powder essentially with this. I'm gonna to have to do this in um, smaller batches. So grind those poppy seeds up until they're a nice powder. Looks good. Into another bowl. And just continue um, with that until they're done. I love the dramatic color of poppy seeds. It's going to look lovely in this nice um, light colored dough with a nice black, dark black swirl. Okay, my poppy seeds are done and you can set, see that they are a lot um, finer and lighter as well. Next on my stove top, I'm going to melt two tablespoons of butter in a saucepan on a low heat with four, just over four tablespoons of honey. So stir that through, make sure that that's nice and melted, the butter into the honey. And in the meantime, I'm going to separate two egg whites from two egg yolks. Now I'm going to use the egg whites in the filling to make a meringue to add to the poppy seed mixture. So make sure you get no egg yolk in there at all because that will definitely corrupt your meringue. The egg yolks will be used as an egg wash on the top of the poppy seed loaf and any anything else that you're baking um, alongside this. So the egg yolks are set aside. Well, I have five minutes until my kutia is done in the oven, and I have just enough time to get my poppy seeds mixed with the honey and butter, and one tablespoon of brandy. You can use any kind you like, a regular brandy, or you can use an apricot. We're using a cherry one tonight because that's what we have on hand. It will go lovely with the hazelnuts and all these other flavors. Now stir, stir, stir. You're gonna cook that for five minutes. You want that to be completely moistened. If you see that it's a little too dry, you can add a couple drops of water at a time as necessary. You do not want this to burn or to get too dry, okay? So stir that through, get everything mixed, and you have five minutes to cook that. You're going to make a paste, basically, with this. All those smells in the kitchen are amazing. Oh, they are. Now this recipe is definitely a labor of love. You get to use all of your equipment in your kitchen <laughs> as well. <laughs> Today, we use our coffee grinder, our food processor, we're gonna use our mixer in a second. Now I've got half a cup of um, hazelnuts, which I smashed up. I wanted to be able to at least measure half a cup of my smashed hazelnuts. And now we're gonna grind that through in my food processor. You want that to be nice and fine. Now that's more like a hazelnut meal at this point, nice and finely ground. And now I'm going to add this gorgeous uh, poppy seed paste that we did on the stovetop. That's going in with the brandy and honey and that uh, butter. Don't miss any of that. This is your filling that's gonna be spread inside these gorgeous roll. And I also might do a couple pastries to show you how to do that as well. If this mixture seems a little too dry for a paste, you may add a couple drops of water, okay? Don't forget, we're gonna add the meringue to it and that's going to be rather wet as well. Also, two tablespoons of lemon zest go in this. Now, if you don't have lemon zest, you could always use another kind of citrus zest. Two tablespoons. All right, turn that food processor on and let that mix really, really well. You also might have to scrape down the sides to make sure that everything is getting evenly combined. Oh, that lemon zest in there just brightened everything up. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Mm. All right, so we're gonna whip up our two egg whites. Clean bowl, clean beaters. Make sure they're grease free or that meringue won't work well. I'm gonna halfway whip this to a medium stiff peak. Not all the way stiff, you don't want it dry either. So medium stiff, which means they're gonna make peaks and they're gonna be able to fall down. Halfway through this whipping, I'm going to add three tablespoons of icing sugar and some cream of tartar, just to help stabilize. Okay, I'd say that's about halfway. I'd add maybe half at a time of the icing sugar. Stir that to combine the other half. And I'm gonna add an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar just to stabilize this meringue. And finish whipping to a medium stiff peak. It's nice and glossy. I would say this is medium stiff. That's what it's gonna look like. You can make a peak, but it'll fall over. 
All right, here's our gorgeous paste with the hazelnuts now. I've whipped my egg whites. Now you can add, get another bowl if you want to, but I'm just going to mix this all together in the same bowl. We're going to try and fold this, um, the egg whites sort of into this paste, or vice versa. It's very heavy, and that's why you want to add these uh, egg whites. Also, this mixture is rather dry. It is pasty, but it is dry. So do your best not to waste any of that poppy seed mixture. All right, so evenly combine the poppy seeds and the egg white mixture. Mix them well. The egg whites are really gonna lighten this mixture up a lot. All right, so mix it well, but don't over mix it because you still wanna keep some of those egg whites, you know, all those light bubbles that you just created in the meringue. Now set this off to the side, not for too long. I've got about 20 whole hazelnuts left from my hazelnut stash um, to decorate the tops of this poppy seed um, roll as well as the little pastries. And I have about three, three or four tablespoons, I'd say, of poppy seeds to sprinkle on at will. Now don't forget about those two egg yolks. We're gonna add one tablespoon of cold water to them. And we're gonna whisk that up in a small bowl to make an egg wash. And that's gonna go on the top of the roll and these pastries. It's gonna look so beautiful and glossy and browned when they bake up, okay? So I want everything prepared on the side before I start getting my dough prepared here. Okay, now my dough has probably quadrupled in size. It looks beautiful. It's still kind of warm and that's good. I wanted to keep it in a nice warm area. It smells heavenly. All right, a little bit of bench flour so things don't stick. I want to divide this into two portions, two equal portions. First portion I'm going to use for the roll, and for the second half of the portions, I'm going to make four little pastries. All right, so let's pull it out of here. Cut it in half, roughly. Sharp knife. I'm going to put half back in that bowl and keep it moist and warm while I'm waiting. All right, make sure that your rolling pin is floured. I want to roll this into a square that's about a quarter of an inch thick. Okay, so the dough is pretty forgiving. If you pinch it back together, it'll stay. Just roll that out. It stretches nicely and then it'll bounce back for you. So just keep working it. Try and get a square as best you can. If you have to pull the edges a little bit, pull the edges so that you can get the right shape. Make sure that that bench flower is there so it doesn't stick. If you have to use your hands to push out those corners, feel free to do that. Whatever works best for you. If you keep rolling out towards the corners, it's usually your best bet. All right, now that I've got a pretty good square, okay, we're going to go ahead and get about half of this mixture on. Half is going to be for the other four pastries. Or you could do two rolls. Or you could do eight pastries. Whatever it is you like. A little variety never hurts, right? All right, so we're going to put it about an eighth of an inch thick or so, about half as thick as what the dough is. And we're going to spread that to the corners to about an inch away from the corners, okay? Try and get that nice and even. If you want to use a cake spreader, you can do that. Spatula can work just fine as well, too. Get a nice even layer. Look at the color contrast. It's going to be amazing. You can really smell that lemon peel. Using those poppy seeds in the coffee grinder really, you know, um, gets things a little more fine and it makes this, this paste a lot easier to spread as well. All right, I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees. What I've got going on here now is this gorgeous array of that poppy seed and hazelnut paste on top of the dough. And I've spread, I used a, just a plain butter knife or you can use a cake spreader to push it to about an inch away from the edges. Because if you have it any closer, it's just gonna squeeze out the sides and you're gonna waste it and there's just no point. So in order to make a really cool pattern, what I like to do is take two chopsticks, okay? Make sure they're even. And I put that right underneath, in the center, as best I can, to 
to lift that center portion up to try and make a nice little swirl in there. Okay? Bear with me. They're just the right length and just the right height. So now what I'm going to do is from each side, I'm going to roll in to the center like a scroll. Okay? You might need some room here. So roll that dough in over top and then swirl that in. Don't squeeze the stuff out, but roll that up like a roll towards the center. Now, I'm going to hold that there with my bench flower, and I'm going to go from the other end towards the center. Same thing. Roll that in. Okay. Now, we need to bring it together. So I'm just going to bring that in. Okay. Now, we're going to secure that on the top by just pinching it all together. Okay? That's why you don't want to use too much bench flour either. Pinch that together. You're going to be able to work it a little better in a second. But just get it started. Okay? There you go. Pinch that nicely. Fold that over. However, you got to get that closed. Okay? This is going to be the bottom side anyway. Be patient. This is a food of love. You just want to make sure that that is secure and together. If you need to wet that just ever so slightly with just a couple drops of water on your hand so that they'll stick together, then do that. What you don't want to do is break through that dough, like separate your roll and break through. So there you go. All right, that looks good. Okay, that's together. I'm going to pinch the ends in just the same because if you don't that filling is just gonna come right up so pinch that up this again this side doesn't have to look perfect because this is gonna be the bottom okay all right now shape that up more cylindrical as needed grab a baking sheet I have mine lined with a silicone mat you can use parchment if you like okay and ever so gently, and using the chopsticks, we're gonna flip this over, okay? Chopsticks help, they give you a good, secure base. So there, that's gonna help a little bit with a really cool swirl. If you wanna push that in and pinch that too, just to make a seam, then you're gonna have an even neater, neat as in cool, um, swirly pattern chopsticks done. Next, I am going to decorate this with hazelnuts all along the top. Okay, right down that center bit so that when people get a slice of it, they should get a nice whole hazelnut with it. I'd say every inch or so. You want to save at least four whole hazelnuts for your little pastries. And I try and put the hazelnuts in so that the drop side up, like it looks like a little Hershey kiss almost. They look like buttons. Mm -hmm. You like mom? I love it. I think it's beautiful. Well, good. It's very celebratory. It is quite celebratory, isn't it, mother? And just kind of push those in without breaking the dough. Push those in. Make them happy. All right, now, don't forget about that egg wash we have. Okay? Use a silicone brush or a pastry brush. And we're going to brush. Try not to bother your little hazelnuts that you just set so lovingly and give a nice thin coating of the egg wash, nice thin egg wash, all over the outside. Now a lot of breads that you do like this um, often require a whole nother rising. This however does not. We're going to throw this smooth in the oven right now after it's prepared and decorated. Get around those edges, the egg wash. That's just going to make everything so brown and beautiful. Try and dot between those hazelnuts maybe with a little bit of egg wash. Not too much though. You don't want it to pool. You do want a nice even round top. Crisp crust. Now I'm not done yet. I'm just going to sprinkle the top of this as generously as you desire with poppy seeds. Try and keep them on there. Don't skimp. And voila, look at that. That is going to be the most beautiful roll you've ever seen. All right, into the oven. It's gonna go for 30 to 35 minutes until it's beautifully browned 
and nice and crisp. In it goes. And then we'll get these pastries done. Otherwise, do two of these. All right, in order to make four of these pastries, we're going to cut this beautiful dough, the rest of it, into 12 equal portions. So the easiest way to do that is to pull that apart, you know, kind of spread it like you did the roll, and then eyeball, okay, cut it in half, and then out of each one of those, you need six. So cut that in half again, each, and then cut that into three equal portions. Or you can weigh them if you want to be really, really precise. So I'm going to put them back in the bowl and cover them until I'm ready for each set of three. So you're gonna take these three and you're gonna roll each one of these out into a flat ovally pancake, okay? Equal sizes as best you can. They can be nice and thin. Stretch them into the shape that you want to try and get them as equal as possible, okay? Something like that, along the lines of a little oval, okay? Three of them. And these are gonna get stacked on top of each other. And you can do a gorgeous little design and use the rest of your poppy seed mixture. Now some people make these little pastries and they just put honey in them or sprinkle nuts on the honey or they use jam or you can use this poppy seed mixture that we made for the roll. And it's again, it's very forgiving. Just don't break through the layers. Be gentle and try and make equal shapes. If one is slightly larger than the others, put that one on the bottom when you stack. Okay. They're nice and thin. I would say they're, shoot, about an eighth of an inch. Okay, I have roughly three pancake size pieces of dough ready to stack. Okay, like I said, put the biggest one on the bottom if there is a bigger one. I'm going to spread the poppy seed mixture just the same, nice and thin, within about an inch of these sides on two of the layers, those are gonna be the two bottom layers. You can do it thinner with these because they are more delicate than the giant roll, right? You could even switch up layers. You could do one layer of honey with nuts or and do another one with the jam or, or the poppy seed mixture. Again, mix and match, use what you have, use what you like. I just love the color difference, the uh, black with the light colored dough and how beautiful that looks when everything's swirled together and, and cut and you know, prepared beautifully. Okay, another layer. The top layer gets nothing, okay? Make sure you save enough of the mixture for four of these guys. Next, we're going to layer them. So place the one on top of the other, the two that have the filling, they look lovely. I would kind of pinch those together on the edges where there's just the dough to kind of try and seal that a little bit and put the top one on top of that. Do the same sort of thing. Press that down along the edges a little bit, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect either because even though it's sealed a little bit, it's still gonna kind of ooze out the sides and that's really gonna be pretty too. All right, if you put a nice slit down the center, keeping about an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom, so right through the middle, okay? Lengthwise. It allows you to do a really neat pattern. Don't go too far, because that still needs to hold together, okay? So, now, I'm tw twisting it to you. Make sure it's cut all the way through, too. So we're gonna flip the top part back through this on the slit, okay? Very gently and bring that right through that hole. And you're gonna see the beautiful layers that you've got. And bring that to the point where you can flip that all the way to where it's flat again. So this top just got sliced and pushed through and brought back up, okay? Next, this bottom part is going to get pushed down through, okay? Just the same. 
and flipped underneath. So now you've got this super cool layered pattern that you're going to be able to see the poppy seeds through. Check that out. Okay, so the top goes in and under, the bottom goes underneath and through. See, that's the little tail. And I'm going to place that right on my silicone lined baking sheet. Push the center together so there's less of a slit. Okay. And right in the center, I'm going to put my little hazelnut right where you tuck that bottom in. It's going to rise around that. And I'm going to put a little egg wash on there too. Okay. If you want to sprinkle the top of that again with poppy seeds, you can, but I'm not going to on these because it looks really nice to be able to see these layers, all ruffly layers, okay? Get the egg wash on and then pin that together with a nice little hazelnut. So let me show you. And there you go, like a little belly button, okay? And continue on with the other three sets of three pieces of dough you have and make four of these gorgeous pastries. You'll see how beautiful they are when they puff up. All right, these four are done. They're so pretty. Look at that. And they're ready to go in. You can imagine how pretty they're gonna be when they come out. They are also going to go in for 30 to 35 minutes. I would start checking them around 22-ish to make sure all is well. These aren't as big as the the, um, the roll, and the roll just finished, and it took me 26 minutes to look golden and beautiful. So I'm gonna start looking at these around 22 minutes just to make sure all is well. In they go, 375. Okay, look at this gorgeous poppy seed roll. Makivnik, that's what that is, Ukrainian Makivnik. It smells heavenly. It's, it's removing right off of here, it's just sliding. And it's crispy and brown, and it's gonna be so pretty when you cut in. But don't cut into it yet. Wait until it's cooled before you start doing that. Well, these might just be the prettiest things I have ever made. These are absolutely glorious. If you bring that to the table, your celebration, your feast, whatever, boy, people are going to be impressed with these. All right, onto the cooling rack. These are going to cool as well until we're ready to eat them, or you can eat them when they're slightly warm. You could even put butter on them if you wanted to. Mm. There you go, let's put it with the bread. all cooled off my poppy seed roll it actually looks kind of like a loaf of bread a delicious loaf of bread doesn't it mm -hmm. so I'm gonna slice into it it might not be at the very end the beautiful swirl I might have to slice in one one more so we'll see mom's gonna have a piece of this mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try one of these things for you oh, okay we got a little something going bread. on here so use a serrated knife so that you can cut things better Oh, it's Look gorgeous. At Look, Look at that. that. Isn't that lovely? That's exactly what I was going for. And that it's right there beautiful. in the center is because we did that little bit with the, um, Chop the chopsticks. Okay, mm -hmm. that helped out a lot. Yes. Look at this. It's so beautiful. Look at that. Oh my god, it's so pretty, Kim. We did a good job. Mm-hmm. did a great job. Mm -hmm. You want that piece? Yes. So mom's gonna have this piece. And I'll try one of these pastries for you just to show you what's going on. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, it's, so it's, it's a sweet dough, so it's great for dessert, especially on this mm. Ukrainian Christmas Eve. Tender. Tender. Good. How do you like the filling? Beautiful. Did I do it right? Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Here's our gorgeous pastries. They are really, really impressive, I have to say. Look at this perfect little thing and how the poppy seed filling kind of popped out of all those little ruffly ridges. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's exciting. So you pull this apart and look at that. It pulls apart almost like a croissant. Look at that, all in there. All the nooks and crannies, mummy. Beautiful. Oh, this is so delicious. Is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, let me try it. Mmm. Mmm. 
It's crispy on the outside. Mm -hmm. The dough is just okay. sweet enough. Mm -hmm. It's not too sweet. The filling is just sweet enough. It's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect ending to a meal, mm -hmm. a big meal. Mmm. Get a little nut. <laughs> that is good. Mm. Mm. I like the hazelnuts in there. I, not that I don't like like almonds in there, but I like the hazelnuts. Me too. And you can really taste that lemon zest. Mm -hmm. mm. These little layers do just that. Break off into layers. Little, you can pull them off. Oh, that is nice. Want to try that? Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Light and fluffy dough. Mmm. Really good. Mm. Now you can taste the lemon, but it's not overpowering. Mm -mm. Mm. Beautiful. Perfect with a cup of tea. I was just about to say that. Perfect with a <laughs> cup of tea, glass of milk for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's sweet enough for the kids that they'll like it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's right. it's not too sweet for the adults. It's right. just right. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Wonderful. So that's how you do it. That's how you make McKivnik. It's called a lovely poppy seed roll. You can do two rolls like this. That is impressive. That'd be a wonderful gift mm -hmm. to bring to someone's house for the Christmas Eve feast. That's right. You know, so someone doesn't have to do all the work. <laughs> right. And then you have one at home too. It's wonderful. Make two. Wonderful. They're gorgeous. These are absolutely beautiful. And if you're gonna go all out and, and make this, because it is a food of love, you can go ahead and make a double batch. You know? That's what I would do. <laughs> make it for a variety of people. You could do eight or or sixteen even of these pastries, you know, and be done with it. <laughs> so good. And they'll be great for breakfast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. On Christmas Day. So that's how you bake McKibnick. It is a sweet dough and it's a beautiful poppy seed roll. Okay? Traditionally speaking. Fabulous, Kim. You want to do that next year? Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. You can find me on Instagram.com slash Web Chef of All Trades. Find my shows on iFood TV at my.fossum.tv slash cooking with Kimberly, youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly, or you can find me on Roku, my channel is cooking with Kimberly, and I'm also syndicated on Apple TV, Amazon, and a few other places. Come to my website at cookingwithkimberly.com and subscribe. Interact with us and let us know what's going on in your culinary world, all right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.